So uh, this is a really big box, uh, clearly. Actually, the camera doesn't really do it justice. How big it is, it's heavy too. Uh, it is not a Dell EMC, you actually can't see that logo down there. In this video, I'm gonna be unboxing a dual node super micro fat twin. I have uh, disinfected this box, by the way. So here is the server in the box. And something that's nice is this did come with the rack rails. Uh, I always get rack rails with my servers if I can. Plus that increases the resale value if I ever want to sell it in the future. So over here, it looks like we have some other stuff, but uh, that's just stuffing, packing materials and stuff. So that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna try and lift this here. I'm still not supposed to be lifting super heavy stuff with my bad arm. I don't really want to cut up this box because it has uh, it's a Dell EMC box. It's a nice box. If I ever want to ship a rack mount server, I could use it as well. So we're going to kind of wrestle this thing out here. Let's go ahead and slide the server onto the desk. And I'm going to start by showing off the back of this. On the back we have two, I'm not really sure how to get those out, so I'll look into that before I break it, but we have our two nodes, and I think these are 1280 watt power supplies each. We have two of them for redundancy, obviously. Yeah, so 80 plus platinum, and 1280 watts. It's pretty cool. So they're long, probably long, up to the back plane, really. And I'm gonna show off the front, I guess. So each of the nodes are identical, so I'm only gonna do a hardware tour on one. We have our IPMI interface and our dual USB 2. Uh, Gigabit LAN, two of them. Our DB9 serial connector and VGA. And we have three PCIe slots. One is a half height and the other two are full. And something that I was worried about, because I've tried doing research on this particular model and can't find any information, is there is a riser card in here in the back that allows you to put things in here and i wasn't sure if this server i bought came with that and it doesn't look like that's in there and it's the full one for dual 16x and an 8x i think is how that works so you can't really see too well in there but that's what it looks like going around to the front we have 12 hot swap bays and each of the nodes i believe gets six of these and that's divided halfway. So it looks like it comes with the rack screws too. That's always nice. And I'm not going to be putting drives up here. This is going to be a VM kind of cluster. So I'm probably going to keep an SSD in the first bay on each system. And I want to make a wooden kind of baffle or something that goes and fills up the rest of the space, has some nice looking ventilation and whatnot, uh, just to keep this thing looking nice. As for other stuff, we have our power button and a rack ID, it looks like. And you can see a little B right there. There's also an A on the other side for the second, or the I guess the first and the second node in this. So that's nice. I don't have to label them or anything. So looks like we lift that off. Very nice. So this is a really interesting uh, design. We have our dual CPUs. They use different mounting brackets for the CPU cooler. And... Like I said, this system, I think, comes with 32 gigs of RAM, and that's 16 per node, but we have all of our slots fully populated here. So I wonder if they messed something up. Because if we take this module out, this is a 2 gig module, it looks like, 2 gig DDR3 module. Uh, that's kind of surprising that it's, I haven't seen modules that small in a while, but that's pretty cool to have those. So two gigs per module across eight per system ends up working out to 32. And the way the uh, back plane connects, it looks like, is there is a kind of thing here that everything plugs into and then it just plugs into a slot on the board. That's pretty interesting. 
We have 80 millimeter Nidec Ultra Flow fans. Hopefully those aren't horribly loud. They look pretty beefy, but as long as they're, you know, not too bad, that's fine. Like I said, dual E5 2630LV2, that's the same processor I have in the Net Backup 5230. I'm going to try and remove that. I figured out how to do that. So you can see that cartridge connector there and looks like all the power and stuff connects through that too. That's pretty wild actually. So I'm just gonna gently set this down and we can kind of tour the individual system. The other node is identical to this. So if we look here, we have our USB port on the inside and that's for booting off of a flash drive. Again, dual CPUs and all eight RAM slots are populated on the on this side and the other side. We have these two SATA connectors. I go to that uh, connector thing. And that's kind of interesting because there's only two and I wonder how that interfaces with all six or if it does or if they have some kind of multiplexer or something going on there. Because I think that's how SAS expander backplanes work and I wonder if they're taking advantage of that. That's really interesting. So all of these slots are 16x physically and it looks like all three of them are by eight electrically. So, but they have all the pins, kind of interesting. But that's a crazy amount of uh, PCIe expansion for this. You could probably even put a video card in there or something. But with that said, I don't think there's anything else. I'm not gonna be replacing the thermal compound on these just yet. The uh, RAM might get upgraded. Like I said, each node has 16 and that's perfect for the testing I'm gonna be doing uh, to start with. But I have 64 laying around that came out of the map backup server. So I think with that said, we're gonna go ahead and uh, plug this in and turn it on. And I'm probably gonna bring up a second monitor. One thing that's pretty cool is they put the uh, custom IP address for the IPMI on each of these. It's the same for both of them but uh, we can change that in the BIOS probably. So I'm gonna crawl under the desk and turn on the power strip. And we are going to boot this first uh, node A first. So. Sounds like the power supply is turned on. Let's uh, hit the power button on the server. Only the fans on node A are working right now. Those are the only ones that turned on. So we have our host, and it should just say no OS found. So So it quiets down, it sounds like it's uh, running the fans on a pretty precise curve as opposed to having uh, steps, but uh, of course no boot device. So we are going to shut it down and I'm going to move all of our peripherals to node B and we're going to fire that one up. So we're plugged into node B. It's interesting on that one, the fans ramp down right away. I wonder if that one did some kind of post or something like my storage shelf that when you plug it in and turn it on the first time the fan goes to full speed, but after that when you turn it on the fans just kind of stay at idle from the start. Kind of interesting. I also noticed that only these two bays light up on both nodes and I wonder if that's because only two of them are plugged in and they chose these ones to plug in. I'm going to look into that because if I eventually decide to fill up this whole thing with drives, which is really unlikely, but I might, I'm obviously going to have to find a way to plug those in somehow. So this one works too, I guess. I'm going to try and uh, configure the remote management on both of these and I guess show that off. We also have our unit ID. You actually can't see that, but whatever. I just realized I forgot we haven't booted both systems at the same time yet. 
doesn't really matter, but still cool to include in the video. It's nice that these can be controlled separately as well. So it sounds no louder than a normal server. Uh, there's not really much to say about that. Fans do ramp down, so actually it's a lot quieter than most of my machines. So we're in the BIOS, and uh, I figured I should just mention that this is where we change the parameters for the IP addresses and whatnot. So I think I'm going to go ahead and get this in the rack and hook it up, and then we're going to set up the remote management and get this thing on the network. I figured we could get a video of me unboxing the rails as well, or unpackaging them. So I'm just going to you know, slice. It looks like these kind of hook into the top and slide into the bottom rack holes and then you just screw them in somehow. So uh, that's nice, they're semi-toolless, that's always great to see in equipment. And then you have an adjustable kind of slide on the other end here. And you can see that, and then I'm not really sure how this works. Maybe you just attach it. Oh, there's uh, clips on the side of the server that slide into this, and that looks like this slides into the thing. It's kind of interesting rails. Uh, they don't exactly strike me as the most smooth operation, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put these in the rack and uh, continue once we're done with that. So I have the Fat Twin mounted in the rack. And these rack rails are really weird because that screw right there, or that, those holes, I'm supposed to be able to put a screw in there and kind of lock the things because you can see it only clips on like that and there is a bunch of those down the length of the chassis. And none of the screw holes line up. And so I'm going to have to like custom drill something probably to mount this properly because the... Uh, kind of internal rails are gonna just fall off the server when I'm pulling it out at some point, and it's not good. But right now, each of the servers are getting a one terabyte drive just to kind of test stuff with. I have the IPMI all configured, and these are really kind of sticky, but whatever. So uh, let's turn them on. I can hear the drive spinning up. So I have the IPMI working for both machines. Uh, that's the IP address right now, but the only issue with that is I can't figure out how to set a static IP on these. Apparently it's possible, but I, like I said, can't figure that out. So let me put in the IP of the other one. They're 29 and 30 right now, because that's what DHCP gave them. And admin and admin are the passwords that were given to me. And those are subject to change, obviously, but if we put in admin twice, one password harasses me. Safari's password manager harasses me every time. Both of these were having an issue where the session would expire super quickly, and I have yet to encounter that because I changed the system time in the BIOS because it was like four hours ahead probably because it shipped from the west coast to Michigan. So other than that, things have been going fine. It's been a while since the last clip, but uh, since I installed this, the server did fall off of those, or these rails slid over so these weren't latching in properly. And before the server, uh, it was also latched in properly on the side. Uh, and before the server shifted down on the one side and was at an angle or whatever a uh, horror story would come from that, I ended up stuffing some double-sided foam tape in. There's, I think the lip is on this side, but there's a small lip and I was able to wedge some foam in there and it's been fine ever since. Uh, other than that, uh, like I said, it's been about a month since the last clip and I put ESXi on both of these machines. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep using ESXi, 
The reason I wanted to use ESXi in my home lab was because I worked at a place that used ESXi. I don't anymore. I covered that in my 500 subscribers update video, but I might put Proxmox on here. Uh, I actually shouldn't tell you this yet, but I did upgrade these, and you'll see that video in a couple of videos from now. X520s, and there are some cards in there. You can see the cable management back here as well as looking. And if I didn't mention it in the video before, the plan is to use both of these as VM hosts and the NBU as the main NAS. That's going to get some different processors. You'll see all that in upcoming videos over the summer because this is all upgrades and expensive and whatnot. But I think with that said, I want to get this video out tomorrow. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.